Hey everyone, welcome to the Wild and Uncut podcast brought to you by Ruger. I'm your host, Christy Titus. Thank you for tuning in. The line is going hot, so let's go full send on this episode. Since 1949, Ruger has embodied the spirit of hunting in America. Ruger firearms are built to deliver the reliable and accurate performance that seasoned veterans demand and new hunters can trust. At Ruger, we believe that hunting is about more than just the thrill of the chase. It's about the freedom and opportunity that come with it. This is our heritage, and this is Ruger. Hey everybody, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild Nud Cut Podcast. We are still coming at you live from the SCI's 51st convention in Nashville, Tennessee. And I am with the amazing Denise Welker. Denise, you are a Diana winner. You are an SCA conservationist, uh, Beretta Conservationist Award winner. You have literally dedicated your adult life to hunting and spearheading like these incredible programs to encourage the next generation of hunter and women oh my gosh you are how did your like hunting journey start like I, you have boys and you're like like this started out as like okay I, you're an adult on-site hunter right yes okay so tell us about how this all happened because you went from being an adult on-site hunter to like one of the most accomplished <laughs> ladies in conservation and hunters in the world Well, thank you first, Christy, for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to speak to something that you gave me a word I didn't realize it meant that much to me, a passion for getting women in the field. Mm -hmm. So how I started as a mom of a bunch of little boys, Mm -hmm. daddy took them to the field and I went, "Mm -mm, these babies aren't going without mama. So that was the beginning of my journey, hunting with my children and my best friend, their father. It was really interesting, Mary Cabela last night when she won her award, which you are a previous recipient of, she said, as a mom, you'll do anything to protect your children. And you being a mom and her being a mom, I really, it was so meaningful to me to hear her talk about the earth and protecting yes. it in the same way that you protect your children. Yes. And I, I, I can't help but think of all these previous Diana Award winners that really have taken a, a portion of that and lived that out through their life without even realizing it. And Mary just put this beautiful spin on it last night and I just really hit home to me. 100%. Because as a mother, what are we? Part of nature, mother mm-hmm. nature. So our innate nature to nurture our children, mm-hmm. if you get them outside, it ties together beautifully. Yeah. And then if we get more mothers, more women, ladies, more ladies, yes, to tie that connection together, mm-hmm. we will be unstoppable as lady hunters. So you don't want to get left behind. Never. And you're like, "All right, I'm I'm a mom and I'm going with my boys." I'm going with my boys. And your husband was he like, "Okay," or was he like, "Whoa, time out." Oh, no, my guy was like, "Denise, please come to the field." And I'm Aww. like, "Oh, I don't know, they're babies." He's like, They need their mama. So he was a very, very, I am a blessed woman of four sons. My Mm -hmm. sons, would he would tell them, Mom, take her. Mm -hmm. She's as good at this as I am. Mm -hmm. And I said, I don't know what I'm doing. He said, fake it till you make it, babe. Fake it till you make it. So. (laughs) You've made it. Yeah. So I got up there with the boys. They didn't know that I didn't Mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what I didn't know either. Yeah. And we all had a great time. Did you have, did you feel like compelled to do any special training or did you learn by doing so what I tell people all the time I was a young mother I had five kids at 29 so when he was teaching our boys I said actually he was teaching me and the boys so I have been told this you kind of hunt like a guy Mm -hmm. and I'm like well I had four sons so I didn't get treated special as the mom I never wanted to be treated special yeah I don't want to be treated special either like when I'm out there in the field um there is times where I'll let my husband um, carry my rifle, like when he makes bad decisions. <laughs> like this year, oh, he well. made some bad decisions, and I was not happy. And I'm like, "Fine, your punishment is carrying my part rifle." Of the game. <laughs> yeah. But um, but for the most part, like 99.999 percent of the time, like I don't want to be treated like a girl either. Absolutely. I I want to hold my own. I want to feel like I earn it. I want to be respected, and um, 
feel like I've earned the entire pursuit, right? In, in or I don't even know if that's the way to put it, but yeah. What I wanted to do as a mom of those young boys is I didn't ever think them, want them to believe I wasn't capable. Yes, I love so that. So when their father said, fake it till you make it, you will know more than you know, mm -hmm. and you'll be fine. Mm -hmm. So we grew up together, me and the boys learning to hunt yeah. together. And so if I'm not with my husband, my other favorite hunting buddies are the kids that I learned how to hunt with. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and that's yeah. amazing because you guys are all sharing this together. So you're like sitting back there watching your kids and you're like learning right alongside yes. them. And that is yes. so exciting. Yes. So their first successes were ultimately your first successes uh, as well. 100%. 100%. And we all came, there was six of us that hunted. So we all became very competitive with each other. <laughs> you're like, watch you out, know. little. Deer season <laughs> in Texas, you can only shoot so many weekends. It's a lot. It's a big deer season. Yeah. But not everyone's getting a deer. No. So we learned to be good conservationists mm -hmm. as little boys in a family of six shooters. Mm -hmm. So explain so, what that looked like for your family. Wow, what that looked like. As they were little, we could hunt more. As they got older, it was a little bit less. But we'd all go. We'd get out in the field. Some years, three of us would shoot. Mm -hmm. Some years, five of us. Some years, you'd go two or three years, and you weren't the shooter, mm -hmm. but you cheered on the other shooters. Mm -hmm. So we learned to appreciate other people succeeding. Yes. But we all remembered, and as we got older, the joy of being in nature yes. and being in the field. Oh. So that's what it was really Amen. about, being in nature mm -hmm. and in the field. It wasn't about the hunting, per se. It was about getting outside hanging out together, mm -hmm. coming in at the end of the day, sharing our stories. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like, it, like, at least in this century, when women realized that hunting wasn't about killing, yes, hunting was about memories and family time and connecting and bonding and loving nature and loving everyone that, you know, that you're with. The interest in participating just did nothing but increase. Right. And now women in shooting sports and hunting, we're unstoppable. Right. Because there's so much more. We're providers. We are so much more than killers. We're not killers, you know. Well, the other thing we are in hunting camps, so generally we're in hunting camp alone, my husband and I. Mm -hmm. But when we run into camps where there's other men in camp, the PHs and guides always say, when a woman shows up, we're cheerleaders. Mm -hmm. We're enthusiastic. We bring a different level of enjoyment yeah. to the field than when it's just men. Yeah. We're, we're actually as competitive, but in a friendlier way. Mm -hmm. So everyone has a better time. Oh, yeah. And women are fiercely competitive. There's a couple women that are on the Ruger shooting team. One in particular, who, <laughs> uh, Maggie Reese. Do you know Maggie? No. Like, I will not compete against that woman. I mean, she will. She will die rather than lose. I'm 100% sure. <laughs> well, a few of my sons have said <laughs> okay. in the past yeah. that I would say, if you don't shoot fast enough, I'm taking the deer. Yeah. And I said, did I take the deer? They're like, of course you did. Yeah, because you of shoot course faster. You yes. Right? <laughs> yes. So walk us so. back to your first hunt. What was that? What was your first hunt? Well, your my first hunt, I, we had four boys. Mm -hmm. And taking my first deer was a bit of a struggle. I was 27. It, yeah. And I honestly say women need to understand your first year will be difficult. Your mm -hmm. first animal will Emotionally be shot. Emotionally for you. It will, it's more of an emotional mm -hmm. drama. But I got over it quickly. Yeah. My second year, second year hunting, I had a two-year-old. I was seven months pregnant, and I had to go stalk a deer by myself. Yeah. Brian said, honey, I got the two-year-old. You go get the deer. I'm like, how's this going to happen? He's like, you'll be fine. Yeah. So I have to say, actually, the first time I did that alone, I was like, I might actually be a hunter. And you're a mommy Seven months with pregnant, a little baby. Yep. Oh, yep. Yep. man, and you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. That is mm -hmm. unreal. It's, a, it was a, it's an interesting memory. Yeah. 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 And were you successful? I was. And that child that was with us, that two-year-old, is one, our most competitive, committed. He's an incredible bow hunter. I love that. It's his passion. So you're... Your boys, they're now grown. Right. Like, how, how they don't know any different other than mom's a part of every part of our life. Exactly. And that is really special. Not every mom has that. Blessed gift that their father's given me that. Yeah. Just because I'm the girl doesn't mean I can't play as hard. Oh, and that's, and, and that is that's an absolute fact, too. Yes. Because the women oftentimes can do a better job than some mm -hmm. of the men, mm -hmm. right? Like, well, my son, so we have with, with two boys with a lot of kids, there's 10 of them amongst them. My sons tell their kids, go home with Gigi. She's way more fun than Paca. <laughs> it's, it's, I'm, way, I'm way less dramatic, actually. Well, I you're probably less... more prepared. You're like, I, I not only am I efficient, but I also have snacks and clean eggs exactly. and, <laughs> and I, water. And, and you know, I, if we get in the field, I have some granddaughters that didn't want to shoot. They want to just go look and see if they want to shoot. 
don't cheat. Mm-hmm. I don't care. No yeah. pressure. No, it, there's yeah. no, pr- and no pressure. And that's the beautiful thing about it is, as a woman, if you're not quite ready to step up to hunting, or you don't even necessarily have to think hunting is for you, but being part of that journey is so incredible. Right. And um, safari is the Swahili word for journey. Yes. And I love that. You know, people say, I'm going on safari. You're going on a journey. Yes. And every hunt is a safari. Every hunt is a safari. We call it an adventure. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So every time we go to hunt, I tell people, I'm just going on one more adventure. Yeah. I love it. And creating memories. And we're creating memories. Yeah. And they all end differently. Oh, yes. 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 And there's no, what we've learned is there's no goal mm-hmm. set in yeah. stone. Yeah. Take the day as God provides it. Mm-hmm. Amen to that. I love that. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes what I've heard in the bush is allow the bush to reveal to you. Yes. And I and I love that too. Don't come with an expectation. Allow the bush to reveal. And, and that's a really beautiful. So as a female hunter, because my husband, as a man, wanted to sometimes control the field, mm-hmm. organize it. Now that we've hunted together for 15 years, he's like, it's so fun with you because you're just like, we're just going to take whatever is provided. Yeah. Whatever God shows us, mm-hmm. whatever the PH or guide says, this is what we're doing today. We are pretty darn successful that way. Yeah. Yeah. And so you call Texas home, right? Yes. So you guys do a lot of hunting at home then I we would get pr- to imagine. shoot a lot in Texas. Yeah. Especially yeah. now that we got our great exotics. I mean, mm-hmm. there you can hunt 20 24 365 yeah. in Texas. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, exactly. You can have night vision mm-hmm. pigs mm-hmm. and like yeah, all, you can kinds do all kinds of, of stuff. Oh, so much fun. Yep. Texas yep. is like <laughs> God's the country for hunting. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> really incredible. <laughs> well, Wyoming is too. That's why we live in Wyoming. Yeah. But it is Texas is is really an incredible place. It's a unique place. situation. Yes. Yeah. yes. So walk us through like your journey that led you ultimately to receiving the Diana Award. Like talk a little bit about so you became a hunter because you're a mom. And you're an incredible mom. But talk about how important it became to you at some point to be a, a mom to the earth, too, and giving back and so, what, that meant, what that journey looked like So for, for me, I was always an outdoorsy girl. So it was a very simple strategy for my husband. Once we got involved in Safari Club, mm-hmm. we were traveling more. I would never leave the United States till my kids were grown. Yeah. So once they were grown, we started traveling the world. After you're while, an ultra-protective mama. You're like, uh-uh, mama's uh, not mama, risking this, herself. I'm I was, coming home. I'm serious mama bear. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't leave him. Um, so once we did, after mm, about seven or eight years, he said, you know that Diane Award? Maybe you should do that. I'm like, I'm just hunting with you. Like, yeah. I'm just your girl hanging out. Yeah. He wisely said, as a woman that loves to hunt, if you apply and ever win the Diana, people will recognize you as a woman that enjoys what she's doing. Yeah. Yeah. And he was right. Yeah. So yeah, that, you love the journey. So that's how we got to where yeah. I thought, this would be a good way, mm-hmm. a good path for me to have an opportunity to speak to women a little yeah. bit more about the opportunities we have in hunting. Yeah, a hundred percent. No, it's a, it's such an incredible journey. Now you've done how many safaris in Africa now? My manager in here, who's my husband. <laughs> I'm going to make a wild guess about 24 or five. Okay. Yeah. So what's the most profound hunt you had over there so far? To tell you the truth, Christy, every my last hunt is always my favorite hunt, mm-hmm. and my next hunt is the most favorite I look forward to. I love I you. You never, sound just like me. You can't I can get it never out. define it. No, I can't define a, it. I agree 100%. They each have their own mm-hmm. unique opportunities and situations. Yeah. I love exploring all the countries. Yeah. I love the lifestyles yeah. and meeting the locals. Yeah. There's nothing more than I love hanging out with the locals mm-hmm. and appreciating what they are providing us yeah. as hunters. I always try to make a point to go shop local and buy in local oh, markets. Oh, 100%. And, and the, the carvings and the, the, the artwork that you can pick up in these mm-hmm. places. It's just... And I have to say, as a mother, I love speaking to the women that appreciate when we travel the world that they are providing us an opportunity to come to their country and spend money so their families have job opportunities. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, an opportunity for more for themselves yes. as well. Yes. And there is a huge, I think there's a big misconception on the the economic impact that hunting has. Huge. Especially for anti-poaching and conservation and, and all types of uh, humanitarian outreach yes. efforts between, you know, the food that hunters are providing internationally to SEI Blue Bad Blue blue bag programs, which I would assume that you've probably done a number of times. Well, so. we actually aren't so much blue baggers is we just pack up whatever the heck we feel like and yeah. just give it away at our pleasure. Yeah. Um, well, it's the same concept, But it's the though. same it's concept. The same, thing. Yeah. same concept. So what I find is I love interacting and hugging on the mamas mm-hmm. and meeting the children. And many times we'll just leave our hunting gear behind for the guides. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. 
Just yeah. give it back. They don't have a Walmart on every corner. No, they don't. They don't have a grocery store down the street. Mm -hmm. So whatever we can do to provide for them means they'll take care of those animals. Mm -hmm. So I have an opportunity to come back and ex experience their lifestyle and country again. Yeah. So you're, you've taken all of this forward and now like this year specifically, SCI, you have spearheaded the Women Go Hunting initiative and you have been in the trenches I've on been this in the one. <laughs> I know you've been again, in there. Again, again. I know. To <laughs> my husband's credit, yes. he said, Laird, you should speak to my wife about women and hunting. Yes. And I'm like, why would I do that, honey? And he's like, trust me. Maybe I should quit trusting this guy. <laughs> he keeps getting me in trouble. <laughs> but he's led you down an extraordinary yes, path. It but he's like. made me a better person for yeah, it. Well, yes. So, and that's the great yes. thing about marrying the right yes. person is they do make you a better person. And if you spend a lot of time in the field with them. You have a great marriage. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. It yes. was such a, yeah, I, yeah. My, fav my husband is my best friend. Yes. I am so fortunate for that. Yes. And we get to live life's greatest adventures Together. side by side. And yeah. then when you get home, you don't have to call up your buddy because mm -mm. he's right there to share yeah. the story. Yeah, it's so awesome. The memory. Yeah. yeah, I love it. Yeah. We're so blessed that way. So tell tell everybody that's listening about this year's theme for SCI or watching, I should say, yep. also. So basically, we're celebrating women. Yes. Um, I think SCI realized women have always been part of the action. Absolutely. Well, and that's one thing I love about SCI is they're... They are a proponent for all legal hunting for yes, everyone. For everyone. And they have never been an organization that's like, oh, well, your wife can come to camp and hang yes. out. They're like, no, if your wife wants to come hunt, bring her along. Right. And, and they have they have welcomed women Always. with open arms. Always. Yes. Yeah. And so I say, I think where the disconnect might have been, because I have children in their 40s and daughter-in-laws and granddaughters, is we need to make a vocal mm -hmm. effort mm -hmm. to women. Yeah. But also with SCI, people always think it's just Africa. Yes. No, SCI is all hunting, all ages. Mm -hmm. That's what's beautiful about hunting. All ages. It doesn't measure age, sex, or where you're hunting. Well, and we welcome thing, everyone. And 70% of the funding that happens in banquets stays at the local level. Right. And so only 30% of that funny, uh, funding goes to national, which is, is then distributed to different larger scale projects. Right. And that's right. one thing I love about SCI. Like, you know, if you are looking for a way to enhance your own community, the best thing you can do is start an SCI chapter. Exactly. If you want more shooting sports, more more uh, outreach programs, educational, uh, and funding for those things, yes. the best thing you can do is start an SCI yes. chapter because then you have the resources and the, the support. And the foundation, and the, the SCI exactly. has a, yes. The international comes to support you. That's yes. exactly right. And yes. then you have then you have operating expenses yes. to do your own grant programs yes. or your own scholarship programs or your own humanitarian programs. Or and your access own. to people with experience exactly. to help guide you along the journey. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And I I think that's so important. And you, you've not just done like, okay, I'm going to do something locally. Not that, not that that's not significant. But you're trying to really impact this organization on a huge national level. So for me, now that we travel internationally, I have found, as a mother again, which motivates so much of what I think, mm -hmm. I want women around the world, yeah, other countries that we are in as hunters of SCI, to understand we do care about you and your children and the yes. job opportunities for your families yeah. and the difference that you, we, can make, yeah. you those other countries and we as the hunters, yeah. for all of us. Mm -hmm. And there's, I think in America, it's easy for us to take for granted the opportunity that women have, yes. the equal opportunities that women have, because not everywhere in the world has those equal opportunities that we have. And um, sharing some of that with other cultures and empowering those women to do more and be more is really an, an important tool for the future. So the most impressive thing I've learned in the last, say, four or five years when we travel out of country is they have women in what used to be traditionally men jobs mm -hmm. which in America we're so lucky women have yeah. already covered that territory yeah. Brian gets tickled he said honey some of the ladies that get to be our game scouts they cry when they're with you mm -hmm. because they're so happy that there's a woman hunting there's a woman hunting and they get to share this adventure mm -hmm. with another woman in the field mm -hmm. That is interesting that you, I I wouldn't I didn't even think about that but you're right I've not seen a lot of female trackers and and they're um, out there yeah well, there's a few of them 
in the u.s we're just women are crushing it in the u.s you know we there's so many women guides and i mean there's if you walk through this room there is a ton of incredible lady outfitters um so so is it my generation i lovingly say i love that my granddaughters have opportunities to do anything in this mm-hmm. industry they want. Mm-hmm. No longer are they defined by their sex. Mm-hmm. Anything they feel they want to tackle, mm-hmm. it's open to yeah. them. And you have a beautiful family, by the way. I saw Thank your family you. last night. Thank and you. you have a, <laughs> her family is Thank cool. you. Thank you. Boys are handsome, girls are beautiful. <laughs> like you, you. your table is, everybody Thank at your table you. is beautiful. And But you guys are beautiful inside and out. We For, do, we are, we are passionate outdoorsmen. Yeah. And I love what some of my Diana friends, we all say this. People say, how do you get your kids involved? It's a lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We didn't have to get them involved. There's no getting involved. It this is something is. they've done their entire life because mm-hmm. it's our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So how do you guys share that outside of your household? What does that look like for your family? I believe mostly what happens, and actually the conversations, this will be mm-hmm. interesting, tend to roll back to my husband. Mm-hmm. So people say to him, how do you get your kids to do this? How did you get your wife to do that? Mm-hmm. How did this happen? He says, first of all, I married an outdoorsman. Yeah. So but you easy. didn't know you were yet. I uh, know I did. Oh, you did. I okay. was a passionate Girl Scout. Okay. My family wasn't okay. outdoorsy, okay. but my generation, okay. the Girl Scouts was a way to get outside. Oh, yeah. Okay. So we met in high school. He knows I was an outdoorsy girl. Aww. So rolling into taking me out to hunt with the boys mm-hmm. was actually really easy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think for us, what it looks like now that we're to this stage in our life is when you're raising your family, you live in that little shell. Mm-hmm. It's your normal shell. Now my kids have ventured out, they're married, Mm -hmm. having their own families. I always say the pebble that Brian dropped into my life, our life, he was the hunter. Mm -hmm. Took my sister's children into the field eventually, my brother's children. So sometimes it just takes a hunter Mm -hmm. to come into a family. Mm -hmm. And it's like when you drop it in the pond. It's the ripple. It ripples. And you don't know the people you're touching till they come to you and say, I'm ready to go do that with you. Mm -hmm. There's a, there's a man that has mentored me. His name is Jim Craig and he's an exceptional man. Um, he, he's a mountain hunter and they have a little camp that they do and they're in Indiana. And the amount of hunters that are in his sphere that now go to Canada and international, they're hunting all over the world. They're all in on conservation because this one man and one woman, Jim and Leanne Craig, they're incredible humans. Um, that ripple has just went miles. Yep. I mean, and, and you're right. It does not take, you don't have to make a huge splash. You just have to make a ripple. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So I think, I think if most people that hunted stopped and looked at when they came into a group that wasn't a big hunting mm-hmm. group and you took a few people, where did that end, end up yeah. 10, 15, 20, 30 years later? Yeah. Yeah, because so if I can't have the hunters that Brian's influenced because mm-hmm. we married, mm-hmm. we might be shocked. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure you would be. I'm sure, especially mm-hmm. if you look at it, the people that those people impact. Yes. And I mean, yes. it's it truly it becomes. It only takes a pebble. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. a great saying. I love that, mm-hmm. and I'm gonna have to keep that one for for my memory yeah. bank going forward. But it's easy. But when you think of it, it mm-hmm. really only takes a pebble. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So talk a little bit about um, some of your conservation work. Oh gosh, so I married this crazy guy that was an animal freak. His mother said when he found the ditch when he was two years old, she was so happy, she never had to be worried worried about what he was doing. Yeah. So I wanted eight kids, we got five. Mm -hmm. He wanted about a thousand pets, he probably got 500. Ah! So. (laughs) Um, Wait, wait, what is your house, like the funny farm? It was. (laughs) There was an old, old movie that us real old timers were in, Ma and Paul Kettle. We, ha- we were that. We had goats, sheep, exotics, pigs, everything. deer, c- cats, dogs, kids, and everything could come in the house. You're kidding me. Essentially. The exotics I kept out, but almost, there was a lot of unusual things in our home. So, probably probably 70 to 90 reptiles at one time. Oh, no, I'm out. Mm-hmm. 100% mm-hmm. that is not. 40 to 50 snakes. No, yeah, in yeah, your yeah. house. All over our house. In cages? In- Oh, yeah, but all over the house. I uh, yeah. know. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. your husband and I could not be married. <laughs> <laughs> but see, when I married him, <laughs> no way. People were like, did you know where you were getting no. to, girl? I'm like, uh, no. I, I would like to say I didn't, but when he told He's me He's like first, a Tarzan. When he, yes. So the first time we went to Africa, he cried because he was finally there. We were, our kids were grown. It took yeah. us that long to get there. 
he could hardly take the shot. He was so overwhelmed that finally Tarzan and Jane got to Africa. Uh, is that what he calls you guys? Well, at the time we were laughing, Tarzan and Jane. But we grew up watching Tarzan and Jane, yeah. so we always thought he was Tarzan. Well, I'm like, really I would be your Jane. I said the Tarzan. Yeah, I would so be funny. your Jane. Yeah. Well, he, I would have followed you. It reminds me, like your story reminds me of that, like completely. Yes. Like yes. I can, I can imagine walking. Do you still have all those snakes in your house? Thank God now? we don't, because we travel too much. We only okay, have two dogs. We're down to no kids and two dogs. I was going to say I'm never going to Denise's house, like ever. It kept my <laughs> I'm Brian not always, going there. Brian always said it kept his father-in-law out of his house. Yeah, well, he's like, they're like, oh, yeah, just come stay at our house. And I'm just like, for a minute. Uh, no, I'm not even walking inside. You have 60 snakes in your house. Yes, That's disgusting. Yes, yes. So what did you do with 70 snakes and reptiles and animals? and Raised them along with kids. Yeah. It was My kids thought it was normal. That was their normal. That so was our normal. So did you have like sheep and goats acres. that would yeah. come in and poop in the house and oh, then they you'd pick it up? they didn't poop in the house. They were the trained. The only thing, well, yes. So someone asked one of my sons eventually, "Who did y'all train everything? And my kid was like, that's what mom's for. <laughs> <laughs> so did the kids so and Brian train everything? No, no, that was mom's job. Yeah. Which I clearly embraced. Did you ever have a donkey? We did not have a donkey because I knew people that had donkeys and they were not the kind of friendly pets I needed at yeah. the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I've, and, I love donkeys, but, but they're not good with little animals. But my husband grew up with horses. His yeah. mom bred, bred horses, and mm -hmm. he said, Denise, we, we need animals that aren't time-restrictive. Yeah. We need to have animals that you can still have five kids, and you can yeah. do sports, and we mm -hmm. can go hunting and leave for two or three days. And that's why they had 60 snakes. Because yes. we can leave 60 snakes. And we can leave pigs and goats and oh. exotics over the weekend. Yeah, that's true. Yes. The snake thing. I just, <laughs> I just, How did you end up being like, oh, yeah, this is a good idea? I, when I married him, I knew he was a reptile guy. Really? So, like, that means, like, feeding him, like, little pinky mice and rats and, mm -hmm. and you, gosh. Did I like it? Not necessarily. Was I afraid of it? No. But. I'm afraid and part, I'm not even there. I'm, I'm, I'm like, I just want to talk about this because I can't wrap my mind around so it. So, part of the deal, in fact, last night, Brian was just sharing with someone at the Beretta a new relationship and he said the great thing that we've decided about our relationship in 45 years is we've never asked the other person to be someone they weren't yeah yeah so i knew what i was marrying mm -hmm. so if i'd said you can't have snakes he'd have been like no you knew i liked them yeah how long have you guys been married 45 years 45 and you were in your 20s we married at 20 and 22 we've known each other 50 years that is unbelievable so you met in high school, high school 15 and 17 like my parents that's like the same best same buddy journey. we just were buds yeah and then once we realized we might like each other a little bit more we thought we probably should get married so yeah. worked out yeah and marry here your best you friend. are and here, here I, you're, I love that marry your best friend yeah. and that's what we did too marry your best i friend. feel like i married my yeah. we were uh very late aged marriers <laughs> so. but we were very young age <laughs> yeah you, well my, my mom was 17 yes. so she was she very young, young when young. she met my dad and they're they're still married and my husband's family is still married but we were in our 40s and i think we about gave everybody a stroke when you got married oh or that you we didn't get married that we did get married <laughs> and they they nobody thought we would get married um so because he was a wild animal and so was i and Neither one of us wanted tied down. You know, we wanted to be able to just go and climb mountains yeah. and do. And um, but unlike you, you know, we we don't have children to share our journey with, right? Right. Um, and that's something that we've decided to not do. But we're doing other things. We just became hunter ed instructors. Awesome. And so we were teaching, and he's he helps me teach my women's camps, and so um, it's great. We're doing other things. But there's to kind not of leave that one legacy. way to do it. So of my five kids, yeah. only two are married. One yeah. has six kids. I mean, with children. Yeah. One has six kids. One has four. Our second son his wife fertility issues were mm -hmm. more than they were willing to deal with so they're single parents mm -hmm. my second son um i mean my fourth son's married and divorced but he's met a lovely girl that loves the outdoors mm -hmm. first marriage she didn't get that he was an outdoorsman and a non-outdoorsman can never understand an outdoorsman yeah they think you're yeah. weird mm -hmm. and so that was the only drama they they were great friends mm -hmm. but she couldn't wrap around, uh, around yeah. outdoors yeah um I have a daughter who's a single mom. Mm -hmm. There's not one way to do any no, of this. No, and it's, that's the it's all about of it. the journey. Exactly, be good stewards to the land and to the yes. next generation of hunter. And um, so yeah. our daughter, who is not a hunter, she doesn't mind eating all the food. She's like, I just don't want to kill it. I'm yeah, like, that's okay. I too. got it, man. Yeah. That's okay. I'll feed you. you don't, I'm you the mama. I got it. you. <laughs> you don't have to kill it. Somebody in the family will do that for you. Yeah. <laughs> so clean it and bring it to you. What's your favorite way to prepare wild game meat? Actually, my favorite way is the first way my husband served it to me. 
just good old back strap chicken fried. Ooh, yeah, I like that too. My mom's chicken and fries. It is so Plain good. and simple. Yeah. I think the problem with that is that was the first way he served it to me, so that's always going to be my favorite. Mm -hmm. Do you? What do you couple it with? And I've got old, my answer in my head. And, well, I'm going to I'm going to laughingly say in our old age, we are intermittent fasters and mainly meat eaters. Mm -hmm. So I couple it with about. 20 pieces of meat. Yeah, so you're just hardcore meat. So when we I was growing meat. up, we always did <laughs> the chicken fried um, elk steaks or deer steaks with macaroni and cheese. When I had little kids, we did a lot of noodles and cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah the macaroni yeah, and yeah, cheese yeah, was yeah, like... Oh, Randomly, I tried to throw in a vegetable, but that never got eaten. <laughs> so it was either... Meat. either yeah, meat, yeah. noodles, and mm -hmm. bread. So is that predominantly your diet now is oh, also yeah. just predominantly Protein. meat? Yeah. So are you doing like a raw diet or do you adhere to that or how do you? Uh, basically meat, cheese and eggs in any, way, in, in any form that we want to eat it. Mm -hmm. We're not so strict that we don't eat it in any form we like it. I, gotcha. I'm a, protein is my go-to yeah. food. Well, and people are That's always my favorite like, food, protein. Meat. So I can't have a meal without meat. Like Me neither. When people are like, oh, here's like for breakfast, for example, here's. Uh, a yogurt or a pastry. I'm like, oh. Why do I want yogurt or pastry? That's not food. Why do I, I want I that? I need something that had a face at one mm -hmm. point and that I'm going to consume mm -hmm. because, like, I I am a meat eater. Mm -hmm. Like, I have to, like, every morning, you can ask my husband, I have a ham for breakfast. So, as Brian was a weightlifter, so he ate varying diets through the years. Yeah. And he would eat carbs. I was a marathon runner, and they would be like, you got to carb up. I'm like, I'm protein enough. Mm -hmm. I never was, a, as a runner, I was never mm -hmm. a carb eater. Mm -hmm. I, um, I, 100% protein. So what led you into becoming a marathon runner? Well, I was just a little runner, outdoorsy, bike rider as a young girl. Mm -hmm. Got married. I would go my, run my couple of miles every day. Need to do something to get away from the brats mm -hmm. or the kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that mommy depended break. Your, your on mental whether, health yeah, depended on whether, yeah, depended on it. Depended on whether they were good or bad, whether they were good kids or brats, yeah. but one or another I'd yeah. get away from. And eventually my husband said, you don't even know how that is easy running is for you. Yeah. And I'm like, what do you... What do you mean? Yeah, it's, it's like, I think you should run a marathon. I'm like, that seems kind of crazy. So after I had my fifth kid, she was about nine months old, we trained and did our first marathon. That's it. Did and your husband was, do it with you? And again, the weightlifter finished it with me again. Brian gets credit again. It's like, look how easy that is for you. So I spent 20 years as a marathoner. Oh, how fun. So how many marathons do you think you've ran? I think nine. And then once we started hunting more, you cannot hunt and train. No, it's hard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it is mm -hmm. really hard. Mm -hmm. It is. And I have that issue now because our travel schedule is so crazy. I used to do competitive bodybuilding, and I am like, it's tough. No. So as a weightlifter, you lifter, have to be yes. com you have to be dedicated. It's like a four-hour a day job. <laughs> so bef before we started dedicating just to hunting, Brian got back into competitive weightlifting, mm -hmm. powerlifter. He kept injuring himself. I said we're doing one or the other. We're either weightlifting. Or we're hunting. And thank God he chose hunting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And For, he never looked back. That's good. Mm -hmm. That's good. It I was a positive. I did the same thing I yeah. chose. It's yeah. just, it's very difficult to do both, you right? Can't. Like it's, you can't. Yeah. Train, you can't train to run or ride or lift and hunt. Not at the competitive level. Right. Yeah. Because you right. have to be putting in right. those miles or right. doing those hours. Yes. And it's really a challenge to mm -hmm. do everything and wear all the hats and be everything. But you have, you seem to do very well at being all things and doing all things. I'm so impressed. Oh, thank you. Like well, you're, I've, I've been blessed. Yeah. With a great I, family, great husband. A support team. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's one thing I love about our SCI family too, is we are really are a support team here as well. So with everything you're doing, like Saturday, you have helped put together this entire women's mix and mingle, right. which what an incredible event it's going to be. It's going to well, it'll be past tense by the time this airs, so I can't wait for you guys to kind of see more of that, like, behind the scenes. So watch um, our wildlife series, and you guys can watch that, too. But just there's such a need for us to have, like, an opportunity for women to just connect, exchange business cards, exactly. share life stories, um, invite each other along on experiences. Share photos. Yes. Have a support team. Yes. Have a girlfriend to call to say, mm -hmm. so this just happened. How do you feel about mm -hmm. this? Or can you can you cheer me on and tell me mm -hmm. it'll be okay? Yeah. Or can I call you and say I'm going here? I'm kind of nervous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love that you mm -hmm. you put like this whole thing together. It's incredible. So this Thank is you. all in addition to what you know some of the amazing ladies at Sables are doing. Like this is a whole nother dynamic, um, and I can't wait. I'm like really looking forward to it. It's gonna be a couple hours. But is is this something you think we'll be able to do every year? My goal is and. 
SCI has been very, some of the ladies at SCI have what been incredible mm -hmm. at helping get this together. Yeah. I'm not a one-man team at, no, on this at all. Yeah. There's a giant team behind me helping. Um, I hope it becomes a yearly thing where mm -hmm. ladies can reconnect. You can be like, oh, great, every year, honey, you mm -hmm. know, on Saturday, I go see mm -hmm. my girlfriends that are hunters, and yeah. we just share our stories yeah. and our adventures and reconnect. So I see this as something that ladies are going to like to do yearly. Yeah, I love that. I mm -hmm. love that you've had this vision for this and helped make the Women Go Hunting initiative so successful this week. Um, and it's evident in their marketing and SEI's marketing and branding, and they've really just put such a big focus on it. And you've worked absolutely tirelessly on well, this. I'm not sure if I could have done it without people like you promoting it. We have a couple of other good influencers promoting it, mm -hmm. the SCI ladies promoting it. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited. You know what I love the most? I'm excited to see ladies sending in their stories. Yes. How fun has that it's been, Christine? It's amazing. Yes. I, and I love With the, the beautiful posts, stories. Yes, that they've been sharing yes. on this. So if you guys are wanting to follow along some of these stories, if you go to SCI's either Facebook or Instagram pages and they're sharing those stories in there, plus the, the News Blast Weekly, um, if you guys are getting those um, that kind of give you um, a whole synopsis of all the good work that Ben Cassidy is doing in Washington, yes. D.C. and that Laird is spearheading yes. um, and all of the other amazing people at SCI um, and a lot of litigation uh, that we're you know, getting in front of. Um, but also we have like this special corner where we tell a lady's story and some hunts yes. and that's really awesome. I love that we have that right and now. And they're so diverse. Yes. And so interesting. Has so many ladies. Think how many ladies have gotten here because they married a hunter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's been fun to watch. I'm actually launching an episode right now called Why I Hunt and I have two girlfriends that I teamed up on it. Uh, to produce and they were both adult onset hunters as well yep. and um, I, I, you know I think it's not so much why you hunt it's how you get started yes. hunting and then it turns into your why yes. and every why is so uniquely personal to the person but the how if you don't learn to hunt until you're a little bit older yeah. teens or 20s mm -hmm. it's an interesting journey mm -hmm. so I say to women and I think those are the women I speak to a lot because mm -hmm. I came there myself yeah if you feel nervous, if mm -hmm. you feel scared, if you're unsure, I hope this Women Go Hunting gives women like that an opportunity to come find out. It doesn't matter how old you are when you start. That's exactly right. Our, our very first Diana, Audrey Merlin, didn't start hunting until she was 50. Oh my gosh, that's so powerful. Isn't that great? Yes. So you're never too old. No, you aren't. To start this. No. And that's what I love about it is you are only limited by what limitations you put yes. on yourself. Yes. And we saw that, we see that every year with our Pathfinder Award winner. Mm -hmm. Um, we have some incredible people that will find um, equipment, adaptive equipment that will keep them in the field. So there's no reason to have an excuse because hunting is for everyone. But kind of pivoting on that, I want to talk about your exquisite jewelry <laughs> because you are amazing. And I, I love jewelry, obviously. Yes. I have a jewelry line, but you, your jewelry is beautiful. So what are these? Are ivories? I'm sorry, I'm yes, touching you. Yes, these are stag ivories. Oh, so my friend Joy that. Grassley, she's from Scotland. She actually is here at the show selling this beautiful jewelry. That is gorgeous. Yes. Thank yeah. you. So I have to talk to her because yes. I have a stack of ivories. Oh, she will happily oh, take care of that for you. I have a stack yes. of ivories that I have yes. need to find somewhere to to. to you know, to, to send those and yeah, you're beautiful. And that is, that is gorgeous, the ivories. And that's what I love too about hunting is we get to consume, we get the memory, and then we also have some amazing jewelry. And purses. Oh and yeah. The, I mean, the purses and, are wonderful. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I know. It's like, there's so much, I can't wait to go walking around. Shop. We haven't been inside yet. We've been <laughs> sitting out here in podcast row all day today, but I will be in there. I just have to get through the next couple of days of interviews and then I'll be able to walk around and I'm going to be doing some shopping myself. So I'm sure you find this. People say they come in my home, they see my clothing and jewelry mm -hmm. and they're like, where do you shop? I'm like, that's the eye convention. The hunting convention. I go to the hunting <laughs> convention. Everything comes from there. Yeah. 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 Well, there's the most beautiful stuff in here. Handmade, very authentic, unique. Um, very unique. And, and yeah. I mean, you're not only going to get to come here and book a hunt potentially with some of the best guides and outfitters in the world, but you're going to, some of the finest craftsmen yes. and women in the world. Yes. Beautiful guns, beautiful jewelry, mm. beautiful home furnishings. Mm -hmm. A little bit of everything yeah. for everyone. Yeah, and I love that about this convention. So if you guys haven't been to an SEA convention, we welcome you, ladies yes. especially. And um, so if people want to reach out and learn more about what you're doing or where, where can they connect with you? The best actually is Ben Cassidy and Cla Ben's 
young lady, Claire Fontenberry, that works mm -hmm. for him, mm -hmm. she she has a place to go. Online. Online. So mm -hmm. go to SCI or safariclub.org is SCI's website. If you guys go on there, um, there's tabs across the top. There's women in hunting initiatives, women go hunting, I should yes. say, initiatives. And you click on those and there's a ton of resources. And um, go online, obviously, to Instagram, Facebook. Um, and you can go to SCI's website and then SCIF, SCIF, uh, which is the right. foundation side, which does a lot of outreach, education events, um, and will help help you ladies all kind of welcome you into this mm -hmm. beautiful family that we call SEI and we're so glad that you're here today and thank you so much for everything that you're doing for SEI and Women well, in Hunting. Well thank you for inviting me and thank you to SCI for realizing it's time to call out the ladies and say please yeah. come and join us. Yeah. yeah we need more of that yes. today yes. than ever yes. so thank you And so with much. the mothers we bring the children. That's right. And you boy, get the moms, does that you get the family. You get the moms, you get the whole family. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen to that, sister. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thank you. I appreciate you. No worries. Um, and thank, thank you all for joining us for this um, cut from Nashville here at the SEI convention in Tennessee. And we'll be back with more. No matter where you pursue the wild, never leave home without Onyx Hunt. Onyx gives hunters the confidence to apply and draw tags in areas they've never set foot in, extending hunting seasons and opportunities. Always know where you stand with public and private land layers, unit boundaries, and more. Onyx can even be downloaded directly to your phone for use when you don't have service. Wherever you pursue the wild, hunt with Onyx. Hey, you guys, thank you for tuning into this episode of the Wild and Uncut podcast. We are at the SCI 51st Annual Convention in Nashville, Tennessee, and I'm with Cheyenne Pistol today. And Cheyenne, you are such an incredible woman, young woman. Oh, thank woman. you. <laughs> I just met you, you did. last week, and I was like, oh my gosh, I love you, and we have to tell your story <laughs> because... You are, you are an incredible woman who has overcome so much, and you're now an accomplished elk hunter. Yes, yes. And so I want you to share your journey with our listeners, our yeah. viewers, on how you started hunting, everything, how you ended up at SCI convention, but there's, we'll unpack all of that a little more slowly, okay. but tell everybody your story. Yeah, yeah, so a month before I turned 21, I flipped my Jeep and my seatbelt fell and I got ejected, and when I got ejected, they think I hit my roll bar and that's what paralyzed me. So I broke my um, sternum, my back, three ribs, and punctured my right lung. This was um, right before your 21st birthday? Yeah, I spent my 21st birthday in rehab. Oh, <laughs> Learned how to do everything again. So okay. yeah, I had to move to Atlanta for three months, um, and just relearn how to do everything. So uh -huh. yeah, I um, went down there. Um, it everybody only took was you great. three months. Well, I, I feel like that's really fast. Like well, I just relearned how to do all this stuff. It only took me three months. Oh, they I'm were amazing. great. Yeah, they were great. Um, it was a Shepherd Center in Atlanta. They were amazing. So um, yeah, and then I had to come home and obviously just like you know practice everything I learned and every you know each day just got easier and easier. And how old like are that. you now? Um, I'm about to be 26 in May. So. so it was a couple few years yep, ago it'll be yeah. five years april 12th okay so. Yeah. So you got home after this injury and, you know, where were you working? What was your life like? Uh, before my accident? Yeah. So I was actually a bartender at Logan's Roadhouse. I absolutely loved it. I had so much fun. Um, and I was in school for dental hygiene. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in college. Yeah. So. So what are you doing now? Um, now I'm a gumball specialist at Bass Pro. <laughs> Girly, I know. You're a what? <laughs> a gumball specialist. So. A gun vault. Yes. I thought you said gumball. I'm like, you wait, you, no. what are you doing with gumballs at Bass Pro? <laughs> no. So wow, we you just guys. Do, we it just is do that kind stuff. of day. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. So I get to do all of our, you know, fun audits and our okay. cycle counts and everything, dealing with all of our guns and paperwork okay. and stuff like that. So you're living in so. Missouri? Uh, Nashville. 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 Okay. Yes, sir. Oh, I didn't realize you lived here. Yep. yep. Okay. So you're working for Bass Pro in Nashville here. Yep. You are managing the gun vault and, um, and did, were you a hunter before your injury? So I did a little bit. I only, you know, killed a few does and that was it. I okay. dated a guy who got me into it and I was like, this is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. And I just was, you know, all I did was just kill does. So yeah. now it just like, I don't know what switched to me after my accident. I'm like, 
I just want to learn how to do everything and like, you know, travel and hunt. Mm -hmm. and it's awesome. So yeah. And it turns <laughs> out I have like massive FOMO because my favorite cameraman, Nick, uh, she's, you're actually going bird hunting with Nick yes. and I'm like, wait a second. I'm like, you want to come to, I want to go. What is going on? I'm like totally left out. Yes. But I wouldn't hit any of the birds because I'm oh, really it's bad okay. at the shotgun. <laughs> I just watch you hunt them. Um, it's fine. So now you, you had your injury, you overcame all of this stuff. Um, do you know Ashley Lundvall? Have you ever heard of Ashley? It sounds familiar. It yeah. sounds familiar, but so I'm not 100% sure. She's, she's a Pathfinder, SCI Pathfinder okay. award winner. And um, she's, Nick actually produces a TV show for Ashley and, or with Ashley, I should okay. say. And um, what's the show called again? Able, Able Outdoors. It's called Able Outdoors. And Ashley has a book um, that she wrote and it's called Redefining Life. Okay. And I, I just, I feel like, you know, you probably had to completely redefine your life oh, as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It took me, it took me over a year to just like decide that I did not want to lay in bed every day. Like yeah. that first year was awful. And after that, just, I, I woke up one day and I was like, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm ready and, to live. And that's what I love hunting about. Like when I first started hunting right after my accident, you know, doing, you know, my first turkey hunt, my first dove hunt and everything like that. I love the challenge of it. Like mm -hmm. I love getting out there and just, you know, showing myself what I can accomplish, yeah. being in my chair. Cause I never thought when I was laying in the hospital, that would be anywhere, you know, near when I, yeah. where I'm at right now. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Well, and you're also un with a lot of medication and oh, absolutely. like a big trauma and there's emotionally all these things going on. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's hard to imagine. I would, I would think, you know, what you're probably completely overwhelmed. Like oh, your absolutely. cerebral cortex is like, an, blah, overload. <laughs> um, and it takes it, with any type of <clears throat> situation like that I think it takes at least a full year for almost like a brain fog to lift oh absolutely for you yeah. to be like okay I can do this mm -hmm. and let's how are we gonna do it yeah absolutely. and that was I mean I feel like for you you're once you made up your mind you're like what do I need to do to get there yep. so where were the resources once you're like had this moment where you're like okay I'm gonna do this where did you go so my first trip was in Montana actually and this is what changed my entire life I went down there um, and I went fly fishing um, with a group and they're they're amazing and so just seeing everybody else my age and you know people that had injuries like 20 30 years you being able to do everything that they still love to do mm -hmm. after that I come home and I'm like look I'm you know no one helped me do anything anymore like I I am 100% independent now and I've ever since then I got my license I learned how to drive um, well I had my license I don't know why I said that <laughs> <laughs> she, oh she had to relearn how to drive too <laughs> yes yes <laughs> with, with take that controls. test again yes no. yes <laughs> so, um, but no, Ashley yeah. has hand controls in her car too. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So it took a little bit to get used to those. Um, and so after You're I, like, re, re, yeah, re, I'm like, re, re. <laughs> it's like driving like a remote control <laughs> remote control car. I'm like, I don't like this. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, now it's just like second nature. So, yeah. So and like and I'm just I'm comparing you to Ashley just because she and I have done some hunting together. Yeah, yeah. I mean, she showed up in our hunting camp. She had her track chair on the back of a trailer, and she's, like, ready to go. Oh, yeah. Completely independent. She loads it, unloads mm -hmm. it. Like, I mean, the woman can do anything. Yes. It's <laughs> I mean, she's incredible. Yeah. Are you at that, I mean, are you, do you have a track chair? Are you completely set up? You're, like, ready to go. So, I do have a track chair. I mm -hmm. drive a car right now. So, I'm working on trying to get a forerunner to be mm -hmm. able to haul it myself. So, right now, I'm, like, calling my friends and my dad. I'm, like, hey. Can That's you take okay. it over Dads here? Are good. I'm like, can you take it over here? Can you come pick it up? I'm like, yeah. I need it here tomorrow. And so hopefully soon within like the next couple of months, I'll be able to upgrade to a forerunner and, and be able to be kind of like Ashley and, mm -hmm. and well, be she completely has like a, it's not a car, but it's not a SUV. It's like a, a mom ride. Oh yeah. You know, like that mid yeah. kind of mom <laughs> car, right? Like you put kids in there, groceries. And if you want to haul something, you can. You yeah. Know, yeah. Right oh way, yeah. So yeah. yeah. No, that's exciting. Yeah. So you you start you reach out you reach out and 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 you you go to Montana and what happens there? So I just we I just got to see everybody else. You know, I you know they taught me how to do things like getting in on a boat and stuff like that that I never thought I would be able to do again. Mm -hmm. So just seeing all Is that. This like a. Um, like a, a camp that you could so, attend or what is this program you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, it was Access Unlimited. So okay. they're kind of like a disabled group, kind of like it's disabled like outdoors. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So it was called Access Unlimited. So he actually reached out to me. Um, while I was in rehab at the Shepherd Center, um, a lady that was my kind of like, I wouldn't say a sponsor, but she was mm -hmm. kind of like my big sister kind of thing that she's already been through and she came back and if I had any questions or anything that she, you know, 
helped me with. And so mm -hmm. she got to go out there that year while I was in rehab and mm -hmm. she told Jesse about me and Jesse's like, we've got to get you out here. So mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that they did because they definitely, life. absolutely. Yeah. That's what I love about all these nonprofits and stuff because yeah. they don't, you know, they're, they're, they're doing amazing things yeah. that they don't know that one little trip can change someone's life. Like, and it does. So much. It's very yeah. profound. Yeah. Oh yeah. Definitely. So you learned all of these new resources to really reinvent your life again. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. And, and more, more so involved in the outdoors even than prior to your injury. Oh, definitely. Definitely. And hoping to expand that eventually. <laughs> yeah. So what led you to elk hunting? Um, so Blake actually reached out to me. So Weston is the one that started Disabled Outdoorsman um, out of Texas. Mm -hmm. um, Weston just was like, hey, on Instagram, he followed me. He's like, hey, you want to come hunt mm -hmm. Axis? And I was like, sure, let's do it. So I flew out to Texas, got to hunt with him, um, loved it. And so mm -hmm. I was like, this is so cool. So I guess Blake had followed me from Weston's page after mm -hmm. he saw me going out there for a while. Um, and so he kind of reached out to me. He's like, hey, this is we're with Disabled Outdoorsman Utah chapter. We'd love to get you out here. I'm like, okay, cool, let's do it. So I got to fly out. We spent a week out there with uh, four other people or three other people mm -hmm. that were um, disabled as well. So mm -hmm. it was the best trip. Were you hunting trip. with Bridger? Uh, so he was there, but he didn't go hunting with us. Okay, so Bridger <laughs> is my boyfriend. Oh, um, yeah, I heard all about you. <laughs> yeah, he's 12. And um, I met Bridger a few years mm -hmm. ago. He showed up at my booth at Hunt Expo, and he wanted to buy his mom a Valentine's present. Yes. And so I helped him make that happen. And then the following year, he shows up, and he was so proud. He brings me this candy Valentine with his picture on it. And <laughs> so now we're like official Valentine-like sweethearts. Aww. So then the next year I'm married and he rolls up and he had taken a 200 inch deer on the Arizona strip. Oh the, yeah. I watched your podcast about that where he's yeah. like, did your husband shoot a 200 inch deer? I was like, I love this. No, he was, he rolled up to me like coming in hot in his track chair and he's, well, it wasn't his track chair. It was his other indoor Little one. Little scooter thing. Yeah, his, yeah. I mean, that thing's big though. I know. It's we so ride fast. double on it. And he literally rolls up, slams on the brakes and he's like, Hey. I heard you got married. <laughs> Does your husband have a 200 inch deer? And I'm like, Didn't no, he so. doesn't. He's like, he better step up his game. <laughs> and I'm like, this is coming out of an 11 year old, like, and he's tiny yes. and just the sweetest, like, cutest little yes. human. I love him. And I'm like, oh my gosh, we're podcasting. Oh, now. yeah. No, he's because the he's sweetest so thing. Funny. He's hilarious. He is and he's the wittiest kid I've ever met in my life, I think. And <laughs> Oh boy, you better hang on to your hat because whatever oh, he says, it will blow it right off your head sometimes. You're like, whoa. I'm like, you're seriously 11. That's it. I'm like, yeah. well, he's 12 now. Yes, 12. Yes, we're 12. supposed to be doing a deer, a whitetail deer hunt this year. Oh, so that's, that's exciting. Kind of like, we have a hot yeah. date, and he's going to let my husband go. I guess. Oh, he's going to let him go. He's going to let him he's go. Gonna he's going to allow him. Gonna, you know, third wheel is what he says. Oh, I love that. <laughs> that's so funny. So, um, so you were there, and so Bridger's dad, Blake, is yes. kind of helped who helped facilitate this. Yes. And Blake is, they're that entire family. They're so great with outreach. They're amazing. They're amazing people. Yes. And, and they really are creating and fostering a, a thriving community of hunters. Oh, absolutely. For people that have, you know, like you say, limited mobility. Yes. But you're really not, I mean, you're not limited. You can still do so much, yeah. right? It's, it's your mindset. You just got to get out yeah. there and do it. You, you're only limited as much as you let yourself. You can't, you know. So you show up in Utah, you've got all of these other like-minded people around you supporting Absolutely. you. How did your hunt go down? Okay, so the first day we all went up on the mountain. Uh, we kind of split up a little bit. So I don't know if you met Tate, but mm, Tate's awesome. So he, I don't know. So he was on one side of the mountain. I'm on this side. Um, we're kind of like on the same same area. So we're waiting. Um, there's a there's a bunch of elk bugling across across from us, and so this is like the first time I've ever ever heard it in person. So mm -hmm. I'm like amazed at this point. I'm like, this is so cool. So um, we ended up waiting for a little while, and Tate got his that first day. So me, Blake, and the cameraman went later on that night, mm -hmm. um, and it was it got a little too dark where we had saw two, but I didn't feel comfortable taking a shot on yeah. it. So I'm like, I'm gonna pass. You know, I'm gonna be, I'm just you know gonna wait till tomorrow. Yeah. So the next morning, Blake wakes me up. He's like, let's go. Just me, you, and Cooper, which is his other son. Um, and I'm like, let's do it. So we get up, go um, up on a different mountain. Um, we pull up in the little side-by-side. -side. We didn't even have time to get out. Blake's like, there is an elk right there on the water and hole. And I, like, look over. Sh sure enough, he's standing right there. Blake calls one time. This elk just, like, runs down the mountain up our side. I'm not even joking. Close enough, you could smell it and see the top oh, wow. of its antlers. It was so cool. Blake's like, you're going to have to shoot it if it comes up this mountain. I'm like freaking out. I'm like, okay. You're like, it's really like, like shaking. I know. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I'm like, hopefully I can do that. Let's see. Yeah, yeah. So, um, 
I guess he saw the top of the buggy and got spooked and ran back down. So once he did, um, he got he was in like the little valley area mm -hmm. running back and forth. Um, and then he started going, Blake's like, pick a side. He's going to run up either side. And I'm like, okay. So I picked the left side, yeah. you know, put my scope, hopefully where he was going to walk through. Yeah. Um, sure enough, he, he walked right through it. Blake called, I shot him. He just, he dropped. So, um, but yeah, it was, it was amazing. It so was so, you mu called, so much fun. You, not only did you just go on an elk hunt, yes. but you like got to experience calling elk and having them come in yes. and full circle yes. adrenaline dump like it was how, the coolest thing yeah were you, coolest. was anyone from your family there with you mm -mm. no so I'm the only person in my family that hunts except my great-grandparents so, so awesome. it's so funny my mom's like go catch you a deer and I'm like mom I'm like, <laughs> we're that's not gonna not catch we're it <laughs> yeah that's not what we're doing <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna catch it this time yes. but that's a maybe good idea time. <laughs> maybe next time so yeah. you you know when you approach the elk I mean what was your first impression so I, it was so much bigger than I thought it was of course I mean we're like 300 yards he's way down on the other side of the mm -hmm. mountain we're up here you know of course he's big but like I didn't realize until we were right up on him and I was like this is the coolest thing ever mm -hmm. like is it's amazing mm -hmm. it's amazing <laughs> it's life-changing absolutely yeah so I'm addicted now was that just this last fall it was yeah oh man yeah so and I'm what like month was, was that in October, um that was September. October, October, I think, yeah. Yeah, that's so, so incredible yeah. that you had that experience. <laughs> yeah, it was know, so much fun. Like, life-changing. And so now you're actually increasing what you're doing. You're going to go dove hunting. What are your? What is your next goal in your hunting journey? As, like, animal-wise? Yeah, or? I mean, what do you, what do you, what do you, like, you're here at SCI. Yeah. You obviously, you have some aspirations. You're hooked. Oh, absolutely. What's the next step for you? So I have a mule deer tag <clears throat> back in Utah. So Blake's going to guide me again this year. So mm -hmm. super excited for that. But as far as like my furthering, um, being an outdoor, I definitely want to find a job in the outdoor industry mm -hmm. um, and do, you know, I love, I love this so much. And so I definitely want to have a job that I love doing and, you know, being able to, you know, hopefully reach and inspire other people to be able to get out there too. Um, I've met so many people that hunted yeah. before their accident and stuff like that. And so um, that follow me and they you know they never realized that they could do it now as mm -hmm. well until they like see my post and so little you know little messages like that make my whole entire day and it makes it all worth it just you know going out there and and working for it and you know not letting my injury stop me so what did your parents think uh my elk or the whole the whole thing um, like you know here you are <laughs> overcoming so much yeah and you're a hunter Oh, they, they're so proud of me. They really are. Um, they're, they're amazing. Do they like elk steak? That's the important question. <laughs> um, I don't think they've had it yet. So I have a bunch. So hopefully um, soon I'll be able to go over there and get them to them. Yeah. So. And so your parents don't also live in Nashville then? So my dad lives about 30 minutes away from me. Um, and then my mom lives up in Georgia. So mm -hmm. or down in Georgia, I guess. Yeah, so, so a, little yeah. Bit, a little bit of distance between you yeah. guys. And so what brought you to Nashville? Um, I grew up here. Okay, yeah, so this so is home. It is, yeah, it this is. This is home, yep. and, and you love it here, and this is where you want to be. Uh, <laughs> so I love Nashville, I do. Uh, I'm thinking about moving out west, though, hopefully. Ooh, she's yeah. got the western bug. Yes, I yeah. do, uh, I know. Yeah. They're all You're going to drag her to Utah. <laughs> I know, like, right after my, my hunt with them, they were like, uh, when are you coming back? They're, like, calling me, texting me, um, when are you coming back? And yeah. so... Hopefully, and it's a, hopefully you have a soon. thriving community of like-minded yeah. people there that are doing the same things that you're enjoying. Oh, absolutely. And um, you know, you you're such a bright star, and I love your enthusiasm, Thank and I you. love your pa your newfound passion for yes, hunting. Yes. I mean, I really think. Um, how how did that experience? Did it make you? feel like man I can do anything oh absolutely like I I knew you know I've never hunted out west and so like I knew that it was kind of you know a lot more challenging versus just you know sitting in a blind here in Tennessee and yeah. you know them you know being able to just will right over to the deer like this no they had to like pack me on their backs and you know we went up and down the mountains mm -hmm. and and Blake made sure I got right to my elk and mm -hmm. so we had to drive down this big old steep mountain mm -hmm. and move all these logs and stuff like that so it was, it was a definitely a lot different and it 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 was amazing mm -hmm. like just experience and just know that I was able to do that I mean like because like I said earlier like I never thought a million years that I would be right where I'm at right now yeah so. have you ever thought about shooting archery too um so I'm actually I just bought a bow so. I was gonna say you yeah. need to, you're gonna love that too. yeah I just shot a bow so I'm still we have like a little range of Bass Pro mm -hmm. um and so all the time on my like lunch breaks and mm -hmm. stuff I go in there and shoot my bow and so mm -hmm. hopefully I'll be good enough soon to be able to shoot something with it well I mean it's just good fun anyway like yeah in the oh absolutely my husband and I just love going outside and shooting our boats. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's 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 
it's just a nice way to spend an evening mm -hmm. and and fellowship you know with other people yeah, too. absolutely so do you have a thriving community here in Nashville that you're linking with that you're hunting with and doing stuff with and and or is is your hunting home mostly in Utah <laughs> she's like Utah um, so I have a few friends that live here yeah. um, not very much mm -hmm. um, so I have a couple buddies that hunt ducks out in Missouri and so I've went with them a few times nice. and stuff like that so yeah but as far as like a huge group I usually go you know I would go with Utah and I hunt out in Georgia as well with the different mm -hmm. the KT team um, mm -hmm. as well so so you you went you partnered with the first group that helped you train on how to navigate you know in and out of boats and, and other outdoor um, I guess I don't know what you would call that outdoor activities yeah yeah um, who was that group again um access unlimited access unlimited yes. so I just I want to put some resources out there yeah for yeah people. absolutely access unlimited and then the other one you're working with is we were calling them do is the acronym but it's disabled outdoors Utah yes and Blake Housley is who we're kind of talking about yes. um and then the founder of that was is um, uh Weston Jenkins West, Weston Jenkins out of Texas and they have a few different <clears throat> chapters now I know they're working on getting more I know they have like a South Carolina yeah. and then I don't remember the other the other ones but they have a few different ones so yeah and they're incredible people oh absolutely and they're super active if you guys and any of you go to hunt expo i urge you stop by their booth buy lottery tickets because they do a <laughs> raffle every year and it helps fund these adventures yes. and they also do fundraisers like bridger bought um raffle tickets by my booth <laughs> but i got quote unquote taxed <laughs> for delivery so like he brought me my raffle tickets but I had to pay a surcharge because you know he had to drive all the way across <laughs> one end of the exhibit hall and then all the way back across the other so that's awesome um I did get a small tax that I had to I had to pay on that um but Dio's a great group. Mm -hmm. They're doing wonderful things. Is oh, there absolutely. other resources that you'd want to point people in a direction? Yeah, so the other people <laughs> I hunt with is the KT team um, out of Georgia. And so I've, I've been down there a few times. I can't remember what town it is, but mm -hmm. it's about six and a half hours, seven mm -hmm. hours away from Nashville. So mm -hmm. and they're amazing, too. I was actually just at the NWTF helping them with their booth um, mm -hmm. on Friday. So, yeah, they're, they're great, too. So. They That's do a so lot of, insane. they actually got my first turkey with them. I killed my first turkey with them. So, so it's since your injury, you've gotten a turkey and elk. Ducks, doves. Ducks, ducks. <laughs> ducks, ducks. Um, um, uh, my axis and my elk, yeah. So what meat do you like better, axis or elk? Uh, it's hand in hand. I would have to say my elk, though. Really? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I, I would almost lean to the axis. Because it's like a fattier yeah. meat, and I really like that, like in my burger especially, because yeah. like, it's got all this natural fat. But I, I'm kind of with you. They're both amazing. Yes. Um, but access to you are so yummy. Oh, yeah. yeah. They're both yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. So yummy. Yeah. So I, what, I ran out of that so fast. Like, I haven't had it in probably a year and a half. So, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a while. Yeah, you're like, I needed to fill my freezer with that elk. <laughs> yes. So I'll now you're it. all supercharged up oh, and absolutely. you got it going on. That's good. <laughs> so what's your, do you have a favorite way of preparing it that you love? Um, definitely in chili. Oh, okay. I think, yeah. Yeah. I love chili all the time, so. You eat chili constantly? Uh, a lot. I mm -hmm. wouldn't say constantly, but a lot. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. That's one food that I don't eat as often as tacos. Really? I love tacos, too. Tacos. I'm a taco love tacos. <laughs> Man, I'm, like, telling you, like, any kind of taco, I'm all about that yes, life. Yes, yes. Um, and we're, it's lunchtime. That's why I'm, like, <laughs> diversing towards, let's talk about your favorite food. Yes. Um, no, I, but what I, do, what I do love about the hunting journey is, you know, you're taking your time in the field, and, and not only is it, you know, provided extra confidence, which it does all of us. Like for me, the confidence I get from being in the field to knowing that I've accomplished um, whatever hunt it is, or yeah. you know, whatever journey I've been on. Like it's, 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 it's part of it's part of your mental psyche for you know my mental health and and wellness and my physical health and wellness. And I feel like renewed sense of life every time I go out in the woods. Oh, absolutely. I mean, that's why we go out there. But then to take that home and to have a meal and share that meal with your friends and family and loved ones and you can relive those stories and in a way it almost puts you in that moment again you know and and that's what makes it so special definitely yeah definitely. and and I just love that you're getting to do all these things and this year you get to look forward to a mule deer hunt in oh Utah. yes yes I'm so excited <laughs> yeah. and who knows what's gonna happen next who yeah. knows where you're gonna go I don't know honestly yeah. I don't know I surprise myself every day I'm like Every day I'm like, uh, I'll, I'll be aware when I'm mm -hmm. like, so yeah, it's, it's crazy mm -hmm. how far I've come. Like I'd never in a million years thought I'd be at the SCI show. Like what, 
Who a am hunting I? show? Why would I go to a hunting show? <laughs> right? Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Are you engaged in a chapter? As far as? SCI. So no. next year you have to plan on coming to the Music City Chapter Banquet. Yeah, that would be awesome. Oh, I went this year and it was an absolute great time. So it will be the Sunday before Expo kicks off. So you have to plan oh, yeah, that I saw next your, year. I saw your Instagram Yeah, it stories. was <laughs> really fun. You will love it. It was a really beautiful event. Yeah. They had good entertainment, good food. And it's it's a good time for a great cause, right? Yeah, so, definitely. Um, we'll get you further connected with SCI. Yeah. I know Annette is on that already. Yeah. And she's, um, you know, incumbent chapter president for Utah, <laughs> um, which is what I love also, SCI is, you know, what is what is SCI helping you with as resources or, I mean, how, what is your journey with SCI right now? Um, I just, I've always heard about it. So I never have come here. I've mm -hmm. always been to NWTF and stuff mm -hmm. like that. So that was my only like show that I've ever been to. Yeah. Um, and then I went up to the Hunt Expo in Utah. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, I kind of like this. So yeah. I've always wanted to come here. I just never had the chance to. Yeah. Um, and then so Annette invited me to come yeah. down and then to do your podcast with yeah. you. So, yeah, I love it so far. It's it's definitely a lot different than I thought it would be. So, so it's really cool. So explain how. Um, it's like... So at the NWTF, there's like nothing but calls going on all day. Oh, yeah, it's, every, loud. it's so loud. It's so wild. Everyone's like running around. Here it's just a lot more like low key and chill and mm -hmm. stuff like that. So I really like and definitely all these like animals from, you know, different countries and stuff that I never thought I would like see incredible mounts and stuff yeah. like it, they're just so big. It's, mm -hmm. it's so cool. <laughs> well, we're happy to help welcome you into the SCI Thank family. You. And, Thank you. You know, at this event, what I am really proud of is we are celebrating Women Go Hunting. Yes. And yes. I am so excited to celebrate your journey of your hunting. Well, thank um, you. Your new journey into hunting with you. And um, I'm so proud of you. Thank and, you so much. <laughs> and I really hope that someday that we actually get to go hunting. Oh, definitely. Unlike you and Nick, who are going like next week. I think whatever. you should come. I mean, <laughs> I I'm know. sure I, I can like. I wish I could. <laughs> I wish I could. It's, it's just timing, right? I like, know. I know. Um, but. <clears throat> maybe in the future it'd yeah, be definitely. awesome and definitely. I just I thank you so much for taking the time sharing your story if people want to reach out to you or or follow your journey where yeah. can they find you um just Cheyenne Pistol on Facebook or my Instagram is C Pistol one um c-p-i-s-t-e-l one mm -hmm. Okay. So, yeah. You guys, if you're looking for some inspiration, you want to just follow around a badass young lady <laughs> that's literally doing it all. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, give her a follow. Yeah. And thank you guys. Um, anything else you want to just touch on before we um, close this out? I would just say don't let don't let your injury define you. Don't mm -hmm. don't let something that happened be the rest of your life. You can change at any moment that you want. And you know, it's all, it's all up to you. There's, mm -hmm. you know, people out there that's willing to help you and you're, you're more than, you're more than your injury. So mm -hmm. yeah. A hundred percent. And you are so beautiful. Like, oh, it says you. Are uh, you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, you're, you're such a beautiful young woman. You're, you're radiating and this beautiful energy coming out of you. And you really are, you know, a testament of you can do anything. Absolutely. And Thank you. I really would love for you and Ashley to connect because I think yes, you two yes. would be like best friends too. <laughs> um, she's also a good friend of mine and you'll love her. But, yeah. um, and you guys check out her book. It's a redefined life and, um, her Instagram handles crown, crown or crowned in camo something like that um so thank you guys for tuning in and we're going to be bringing you more podcasts from the um, sci national convention here in nashville tennessee and we'll see you soon thank you for listening to the wild and uncut podcast if you would like to hear more be sure to subscribe to my pursue the wild digital series on youtube and follow me at christy titus on facebook and Instagram.